Dr. Lisa Meek has been an avid reader all of her life. I love books. I love the paper of books, the concept of how books work. You know, because I've been raised to believe that books are very precious things, that you love them. I had the bookmobile that came to our house, you know, kind of stuff. Among the pages of the books that Lisa loves is where she finds inspiration for her lifelike floral sculptures. One of the sculptures that I've done takes crime and punishment about two men falsely imprisoned and the concept of how our justice system doesn't always get it right and surrounds it by thorny roses that are kind of keeping it in and then with a, um, a crest type weed coming up from the center almost trying to get away from this inside corralling our prison kind of thing. We have such a high rate of imprisonment in the United States. It's insane what we have and how do you sustain this kind of thing and as a society what can you do to change the course somewhat. These books get her thinking, uh, they give her a, an, an idea that manifests itself into this art form. Where there's some kind of meaning in the books that makes her think, um, makes her think of a flower. That's kind of where her, her thoughts go. Inspiration isn't the only takeaway. It's where she gets the material for her art by doing something that most people would never dream of doing to a book. It does pain me at times to rip books apart. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, um, you know, because I've been raised to believe that books are very precious things, that you love them. But I needed a media that I could use that was structural. These I could create something that was solid 3D, and there is a whole genre of book art. These aren't rare, 100 year old books. Um, I think it's wonderful that she repurposes them for something else. And I also love art that takes uh, different you know, different media, especially media that you don't see very often. I think it's, it just makes, uh, it, it adds a level of interest to, to the artwork. After plucking the pages from the book, Lisa uses the paper to create exact replicas of specific flowers. Each one is chosen because of its particular traits that either complement or are in contrast with the novel that inspired the work. The flowers are all very carefully chosen. I mean, the, the trick is, to get them to have depth and not be flat because it, you could just cut out the leaves and it would look, you know, boring. And these have to have, they have to turn, they have to curve in a way that nature, as best as I could replicate it because I can't replicate a leaf with these pieces of paper. The print also adds texture and content. You, you kind of can't help but want to see what's, what's written in there, even if maybe you can't see it once it's created. And once they're all dried, because I paint both sides of it, then I start cutting the shapes of what I need, the tiny little petals. Sometimes I accordion crease them and then take my iron and really crease it in. And then with the use of floral wire and glue, I start creating the shapes. There's one where I took Les Mis, and I took uh, a book about rich, rich kids in a poor country. And, and work that sculpture, but all of those are tiny little weeds that would grow in a crack of the sidewalk. And they're beautiful, and you just know if they could be nurtured, how be much more they could be. And yet they're so resilient. They stay in that crack in the sidewalk, even though we don't want them there, they're so resilient. And you know, it's just, those are the kind of things that I'm trying to, in my mind, focus on. Those works that she produces, even though some of them have, um, you know, they're. They're, they're, they're difficult subjects and there's, there's deep meaning to them. Um, they're, every one of them is really beautiful in its own right. So maybe, <coughs> maybe she is creating beauty both uh, in, her, in her profession and then in her, uh, in her uh, art form as well. Lisa plants the finished flowers between pages, inserts them into chapters, and has them sprouting from bindings. I don't want it to always be a book that's just open flat. That, that gets boring if, if that's the only way I present my work. So it's, it's sometimes I actually take the book binding all apart and all I have is the hard cover and then I have to figure out how I want to get this to do what I need it to do, cutting, sawing, whatever I need to do. They get, they get worked on. Flowers have always been so symbolic. You know, I mean, you, the symbols of flowers are so deep. They have value in, in medicine, and they're pretty, and they're colorful, and they draw your eye in to look and think. 
What Lisa envisions growing out of her flower garden are conversations about issues that confront humankind, such as social injustice, racial division, and political unrest. Anytime I make my art, I want, I want it to be approached by different levels. Some people may just want to look at it and see it's pretty. That's okay, you know? Some people may want to get a little deeper and to have meaning, but I still want it to have an aesthetic appeal to someone. I don't want to turn you off my art, you know? I want, want you to want to look at it and enjoy looking at it. It's very obvious where my leanings are, but I'm not trying to say anything negative about someone else's viewpoint. I'd rather foster a conversation about those, but I, I, this is just who I am. This is just who I've always been, you know? These things matter to me. She covers a lot of difficult topics um, uh, the opioid crisis, and there's slavery, there's immigration, uh, there's poverty, um, but maybe in that, in the beautiful expression of that, of these, of these, of this artwork, maybe there's uh, she's expressing hope there, you know, or that you can you can find beauty or you can uh, pursue beauty uh, through those things. But it's it's really true. Maybe it is healing that. Sh Maybe it's these—it's—it's—it's—it's uh, it's, it's, it's healing that these works are kind of uh, kind of working working toward.